Hey guys, I want to show you the status on the, some of the things I've done on this rear truck and we're going to make a project video too. I did a little painting on the fuel tank there and I painted the bumper. Just kind of brush it up, clean it up, make it look nice. Uh, I've been taking the battery cables. I just put the battery cable back on it so I could show you guys what I've done. But I've got still got some more wiring to do. But I've been wiring. You can see the gaggle. Let me get my flashlight so you can see that. You see the gaggle of wires there for all the switches. First thing is I'll show you. I got those switches all working. That's that's the blower fans. I was digging this stuff out of the bumper here. Yeah, they left all these bars and all this stuff in there. And I got these ventilation fans in the compartments working. There's one back here too. Oh yeah, turn the light on, there we go. There's that fan there, there's another one there. And there's a cross tube that goes across the back of the bed that goes over to this compartment. Right there, you can see that. Oh, you can feel the air blowing on you. So the air comes out there. Ventilates all these compartments here. So I got that working. I had to wire all the switches to where they illuminated. I don't know, they just like they took all the wiring out. I don't understand what the fuck they were doing there. But There's the flood lamp light. I still need, I've still got to wire the PTO light. The wire's already, the wire's down there and everything. I've just got to run a, you know, a wire into the cab. And then, let's turn the key on. I still got the, some other floodlights to wire. I've just been working on this when I come home. But this option switch here, I ordered all leds are being shipped from amazon right now i ordered all led floodlights so where's my option switch yeah that option switch turns those lights on so i got that working um let's see what else did i get working okay uh, There were several of these lights here that didn't work. I got every one of these working. And they were just, the way these things work, they've got two wires running to them, power to the ground. The ground is riveted to the box, and then it has a plate too that it's riveted to. And that plate, this lever, this lever here has got a little metal tab on it, and and when you hit that lever it moves that little plate over to the next to the uh to just basically make a ground and shit they just got a little rust on them i took a screwdriver and cleaned them up and now they work <laughs> what other one this one here was not working either i got them all they're all working now Like I said, I want everything on this thing working. Everything. I want to go into this thing, you know, with everything working right on it. I don't want to half-ass it. That being said, yeah, this one here was not working either. I got it working too. That being said, the unfortunate news that I have to tell you, and it's not... It's really not that expensive a repair, it's just time consuming. This oil leak, okay, everybody's been mentioning the killer dowel pin on this thing. And that's what this thing here is a victim of. And what they did, I'll show you right now, is they kind of chicken shit cobbled it together and auctioned it off. I don't know why, because it's not really that big of a deal unless I get the cover off and find a bunch of gears that are chewed up, which I don't 
I don't think so because the oil, the oil, there's no metal in it or anything. So I don't think it's that bad. And I don't see, I don't hear timing, timing gear noise when it's running. But I'll show you. I was a little suspicious when I seen the, when I seen all the silicone here like this, you know, that's not a factory silicone job. Uh, and then I climb underneath it here. Let's see. I don't know, it's hard to see. See all the epoxy? You see the big crack in the epoxy? So what happened is the killer dolphin came down there and fell in this thing and cracked the time cover and they chicken shitted it together and sold the truck. Which, I don't know, it's not really that big of a deal to me. I mean, it's just that I already ordered the timing cover off of CPP Diesel for 145 bucks, and I ordered the killer dowel pin kit too. So, I mean, the parts were not expensive at all. The only bad thing is, you know, I, I gotta pull the injection pump off, gotta drain the coolant, pull the air compressor off, um, pull the AC compressor off, uh, I think I can pull the time in the cam gear without pulling the cam on this But I'm gonna do that and go ahead and run the valves on it while I got it apart It's 12 valve. It's easy to work on. I mean, I don't know why Why would you go through the effort of taking all this shit off and the outer cover off? You can tell they had it off and not just go ahead and go the rest of the way and fix, fix it, you know I, and, and fix it right. I don't understand people and the things that they do. It's just kind of mind-boggling to me sometimes. But that's that's what we're up against. That's probably the only bummer about the whole purchase of this truck. But, you know, it can't be perfect. So I guess, I guess it's a trade-off. We got all this nice stuff in here that came with the truck, but then we got this. And the other thing I'm not quite understanding on this truck See, those are the those are the grid heater relays for this intake grid heater that's supposed to be over here and it's almost like they deleted it or something which I have another engine that's the bummer thing I've got a I've got an engine sitting down there I got another 12 valve sitting down there but it's got the VE pump rotary pump on it so that timing cover will not work here I thought shit I'll just rob the timing cover off that engine I'm not using and stick it on there and away we go but that's not going to work because this one has a P-pump. So, um, anyway, on the intake grid heater, right here is where your grid heater on a 12 valve was supposed to be. Right here in this little square box. Same thing they did on the 24 valves too. But on the grid heater, you'll see the wires coming into it and the little post sticking out here. And they are not here. So... I don't understand why, I mean, there's the relays. I was looking for the wires. They're big, heavy, like 10 gauge wires. Where in the hell do they go and where'd they disappear to? It's kind of odd. So that wire there is going to the, hmm, they're going to the uh, fuel shut off solenoid on the pump. You can definitely tell they had the solder cover off. Now this piece here, one thread from here. All right. Now I need to take the crank dampener off. What do you think, Steve? I don't want to get involved. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sunday. I need a 15 millimeter. I'm pretty sure it's set up like a truck. It should just fall off of there. Let's 
the tight one. Killed that battery pretty quick. You could hear it going down. Yeah. There it goes. Just hoping I get in here and I don't see where that timing pin or that dowel pin fell down in there. I just hope it didn't damage the gear. <laughs> That's what I'm worried about. Oh, I got it. I'd stick them in my coveralls pockets, but they won't ever fix any of my coveralls. And usually they just end up on the ground anyway. So I'll stick them in my pockets and they go down my leg and they'll end up on the ground. there's going to be short ones and long ones and all that kind of shit. There's got a big washer on the end of it. Kind of a spacer type deal to go in there. That kit comes with a new front main seal. What's this one here? No. Huh. Something looks a little funky there. Like it's out around or something. Oh. Looks like they attempted to fix this with all this you see here, and then they decided they didn't probably want to pull the cam and they just bubble gummed it back together and said let's take it to an auction. I don't know. Alright. Screwdriver. And then some hammers. Oh, there goes all those. Okay, I'm coming over there. Pull this cover off. Take a gander down in here and see what's happening. There it is, okay. Well, they got a gasket on there too, but... Shit there. 
fluid down there with the rest of the junk. Now I'll have to start eyeballing stuff real close and see if there's any damage done to the gear train. Okay. That case is cracked like. Where did I see the epoxy at? And there's the epoxy, it's cracked right there. You can see the crack running up right there. There's it's cracked right here all the way up. See the dowel pin where the dowel pin used to be and they got silicone in the hole now. And that's where it used to be. Oh no, they got the dowel back in there. They got the dowel in there. I wonder if they loctited it in or something. Or what they did. You can tell somebody put timing marks on the gears and everything. Here. God, it almost acts like they took everything apart. Why didn't they just put another timing cover on it instead of doing the epoxy thing? There's a the little pump right here. I don't see. It looks like the gear train's fine. That all looks fine on there. Well, all right. So that O there will be between this O to take the cam and the crank and line it up. There's the injection pump timing mark right there. So I was reading a book there and I seen where some guy said in the well it wasn't a book, it was on a forum and this guy said to rotate the crank around until all the marks line up, which that's really stupid. Because you'd have to rotate that thing around about 30 different revolutions to get these marks to line up. What you do is just if you're pulling the cam out, just run the piston up the top dead center, and then when you slide the cam in, line the marks out. And the same thing with the injection pump drive gear. When you put the pump back in, turn it and line the marks up. So you don't need to sit there and rotate everything around 300 revolutions till the marks lined up. Uh, so I got to get the pan. I got to get this thing. I've got to pull these pan bolts here, and then we've got to jack it up. Take this mount loose, jack it up, pull this front mount off, and then basically start pulling gear train off until we get that air compressor, air compressor, power steering pumps mount to the back of the air compressor. That's all got to come off. Injection pumps got to come out of it. So we got a long ways to go. Yes, we have a long ways to go. Yeah, see the crack right there? It's cracked clear through. Right there all the way up to here. Alright. pump well that's a pretty good nice simple oil pump isn't it I like these Cummins because the water pumps are simple easy to change Okay, so now we're down to pulling the uh,
pulling the pump and all that good stuff. Look with that pin. See where that pin got in here? You can tell that pin got in here and oh. beat beat all this up real bad. Rattled around in there until it eventually, you know, it eventually got down in here and got itself wedged right right here. That's where it got wedged and then it cracked that case. That is the shits. All right. Oh, I got a bunch of shit to pull off here. All right, well, guess we'll quit crying about it and just do it, huh? Get a new truck and I gotta do a 30-hour job on it to get it fixed. Or I can use it. Fucking bad. Ugh. Ugh. That motherfucker up there. It's putting so much weight on it that I can't get the spent the clamp over where I can't get the wrench on it. Did that boat go clear to the ground? Or is it in the frame rail? It's in the frame rail. There it is. All right. I really? Bent that screwdriver. Boy, it's not coming apart very easily. Down 
see if I can lay that up on the fender here. Lay this compressor up here on this fender, maybe keep it from hanging on the hoses. Tie it up or something. Yeah, that's a little easier on shit. Alright, I gotta start pulling all this shit off. Uh, this must be their air fuel ratio line here. Oh that's their that's their that's their wastegate line right there. So that's what you do right there. We'll just take a pair of bias grips and just pinch that and leave her on there. Make her run a little better. Ah, uh, what's going to be easier, getting the injection pump out first, the air compressor? It looks like there's only two bolts holding the whole damn. There's only two damn bolts holding that air compressor in there. But, mm, power steering reservoir, that feed line's going to come off. Uh, air governor line needs to come off. I'll pull that off right quick. Tear the whole damn truck apart. The fix is leaking, son of a bitch. I think it zip ties on everything on it. There just ain't hardly nothing that ain't been zip tied. be the oil feed line going to the air compressor there got to have that and pressure line and I guess I'll pick a bucket and stick it underneath there or something or a drain pan or something because I'm gonna lose all the oil out of the power steering reservoir There, 15, 16. I got a drain pan somewhere. Pull a jack up my knee. Eh, I'm gonna have to have a drain pan. I ain't gonna fit underneath the axle. I got a drain pan in here somewhere. Somewhere would be the key. The key word would be somewhere. Oh, it's out there by the buckets. That's where it's at. That gray pan. And then cut the zip ties off. They've got jerry rigged on to everything you can possibly ever imagine here. Another bolt there. That won't be too bad to pull out of there. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I throw that son of a bitch out of there. There we go. And of course, it's probably got my box here on the axle right in the wrong spot where it'll hit them and just run everywhere. So it is what it is. It is what it is. line and pressure line off air governor line off oil feed line going to compressor that's a 
climb under it. There's a bracket, a support bracket here, holding it on. Let's see what all we're gonna do to get that off. I'm pretty sure. I'm trying to think here. Let's see if Jerry rigged a different. No, well, that's not a factory bolt there, so they've had that one off, obviously. There's only two mounting bolts, and the gear will come through the housing, so it can stay on there. And let's see. Yeah. They got a support bracket back there. Oh, shit, they got that thing. Really sucks when you get a gear wrench on something and you go too far with it. It's up against something else and you can't get it off because <laughs> it will it won't go the other way. It really sucks. Like right now. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, I can thread the nut in. I thought I had plenty of room there, but apparently not. Alright. So both the mounting nuts are off. I just got to get this bracket off. And the compressor should come out of there. I should. Now I can't even twist it. I, that bracket's got to come completely off. Uh, what size are those? Like, probably like 16 or 17, and those are, shit, those look like 14 millimeter or something. I don't know. Here we go. Uh. Oh, I'm out. Okay. Mm. Ow, my finger. That's kind of what I thought that that was going to be right in the way in that pump the compressor wasn't going to come past it. Hmm. Will it come out the bottom, I wonder? Or am I just going to have to leave it hanging there until I get the injection pump out of it? It's going to way around that. It's not going to happen. Wow. Pretty really stupid engineering. Either that or take that mortar mount loose and raise it up some. That's probably what I'm going to do. I'm going to stick it back on there. And then take this motor mount loose here and then jack the whole engine up and give me some more room between the frame rail and then pull it out. Maybe we won't do that either. Here we go. I think I'll get the half inch gun for those. Uh huh, uh huh. Okay, that's working that little gun a little too hard. All right. That's a long bolt you got there. Hmm. I think that holds the cylinder head down too. Here's a couple push rods for you there, Felder. Okay, I'm gonna get... Uh, well, I thought I had one on already, but 
Thought I had a half inch driver. 18 millimeter already out. I could have possibly misplaced it. I've been known to do shit like that. I got it right here, Slim. Okay. Yeah, I would say that's a head bolt. Oh shit. I think I might be doing this one here by hand. Oh, the heater control valve. I'm gonna end up screwing up the heater control valve. I better do it by hand or get a short socket. That'd be number deuce. A couple of push em rod -ems. Oh shit, there we go. Number three. Go ahead. Mm hmm. find a short socket maybe and zip that bastard out of there and then I'll have to pull the injection pump and pull the oh look at how shit that's all over there near got killed there's a short one right there I'm missing one <laughs> are you <laughs> Damn, that's still ain't gonna do it, is it? Fucking here, control out. Well, uh, you're gonna be there. Started. Oh. Yeah, fucked up. Yeah, I'm. What the hell is that? I think we just drained the cylinder head. I think so too. Obviously, huh? I'm wondering if I'm gonna have to put another head gasket on it now. Well, I've done these before and I didn't have to change the head gasket. Um, Give me that bucket. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's already all out. Yeah. Oh, I see. You're going to take the last one out, too. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. I thought that cam would slip off. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why you ain't no mechanic. <laughs> right. Those aren't torque yield bolts, are they? TRW. I don't know. Let's look in the book and see. Okay. We're getting there. Injection <clears throat> pump time. Okay guys, I got, I got the injection pump mounting bolts, all the stuff off I think, on the injection pump. Air fuel ratio, fuel supply. Uh, T comes out of the block right here. Let me get my light. Uh, feeds the injection pump and also feeds the uh, air compressor. 
and then of course I had this fast idle solenoid on there for the crane and the air fuel ratio line pull it off going to the wastegate and that's going to get pinched off anyway um, and then the uh, where it comes around comes off the intake manifold and I got to get these two brackets loose we're going to pull the injection pump out of it and then we're going to pull the lifter box off and pull the cam out Wow, that wasn't really holding anything. Yeah, but the bolt was gone. Okay, so we'll have to fix that. See, that bolt not, wasn't even in there. It's supposed to be another bolt. It's supposed to be another bolt holding that to the injection pump, the support bracket, and it's not there. So we gotta see if it's broke off or what's going on there. I'm gonna put these over here in another room. It's like parts. Look at this shit everywhere. Okay, injection pump. Here we go. It's not going to be so light. It's a pretty good size pump. Oh! Yeah, that bolt just, I don't know, wasn't even in there. The support bracket on it. Okay. Alright, am I going to hit the stupid fuel filter or what? Okay, cool. Yeah, there's there's threads in there. And the bolt must have vibrated out or something on them. So make sure you don't turn this pump once you get it out. See what kind of where it's at. Alright. We're getting closer, my friends. I'm gonna pull the lifter box off now. But I gotta Alright guys, you guys are probably going to laugh, but this is the way I've done these 12 valves before. Make a zip tie on these lifters. Just like that. Tighter than hell. I don't know if it makes much difference, but I'm lifting them up and spraying a little brake clean on them to try to dry them out and get the oil off of them. guys so all our lifters are held up with zip ties hopefully they don't fall through I've had very good luck with that method in the past oh man I gotta have a little mess of tools to clean up when I get done with this for the day I'm gonna stand right over here my son he took off and I my wife she didn't think she could handle the hood so I said well I can I can do it without it I guess 
I'm a little guy who can get in and out of here. Oh, that was the dust washer that went down in the oil pan. Note to self, take thrust washer off. All right, well, I can pull this front cover off and reach down in the oil and get the thrust plate out. Luckily, it's a front sump pan, so it's going to be laying right here. If it was a rear sump pan, I might be in trouble because it would have slid down back there. So, just didn't think about it. It's reality of the situation. I screwed up. I do it on a daily basis. See if we can get it out of there. I gotta get off this truck and grab the cam. Cam actually looks in very good condition. Yeah, it looks really good shape, actually. Let's put it on top of the bench where it can't roll and fall off and break. That would be very, very bad. And now... I knew fixing this leak was going to be the biggest thing to do and everything after this fixing wise is simple and pretty easy. I knew this was going to be the biggest thing so I was like let's just let's just quit fucking around with it and let's get it done. Alright so looks like we're still Here, 
person. Nothing. Just stuck on here. Okay. on there. Alright. Well, there's our problem child, guys. We're in this light where you can see it, and then I'll show you what they did and what they nerve chicken shit fix. See where it's cracked right here? Let's get something to beat that epoxy off of there, and I'll show you. Oh shit, I mean, it's cracked all the way through. Yeah, show you what I'm seeing. See the crack on it right there. Get my head out of the light, maybe. Crack there. Right. Get my flashlight. Better idea what I'm looking at. See all the epoxy they got all over it. Crack clear. I mean, it's cracked in half, basically. Yeah. It's broken completely in two. All right. Well, let me see if I can get my thrust plate for my cam out of the. plate out of there. They did. They had this apart and they those those fuckers that's not factory anything. That's all something they did. And that that's what blows my mind. I know for a fact that they took this thing completely apart just the way that I did and then they chicken shitted that cover together like that why would you go through that length of trouble and then not fix it completely and right I just can't I cannot believe that it just absolutely boggles my mind that somebody would do that I mean was the part not available at the time or something I don't know because these 12 valves there's lots of parts out there for them magnet big magnet and fish around in there see if I can get it out I'm pretty sure I, I'm not worried about that I'll get a magnet it's down in there somewhere and get it out of there well guys remember that when you pull your thrust your your cam remember to grab your thrust plate where it'll fall down in the pan so yeah there's plenty of room to get a big magnet in there and fish it out of there Worst case scenario, lead the some bitch in there and order another thrust plate. Well, I guess worst case scenario, drop the pan. But uh, I'd have to put something to hold it up here somehow. I bet I could build a plate and some legs that went over the frame rails and then just, you know, put a chain or something on it. And uh, yeah, I don't think it'd be that hard to do. Uh, well, it's Sunday and I haven't enjoyed any of my Sunday. I've been doing this all day. So, uh, yeah, there's a 12 valve uh, screwed up timing cover. <laughs>